Hello, everyone. This is Kathy Mason from Mason Works Marketing here today on Conscious Business Zone with my friend Olivia Parrud. Hi, Olivia. How are you? Oh, hi, Kathy. I'm great. How are you? Oh, well, I am so excited. Um, Olivia has been on before, but this time we have a big announcement that we're going to make. And I wanted to, I wanted to give kudos to Olivia. I've been working with people for 20 years. This is my 20th year of doing this. And uh, Olivia was in a class called Mindful Marketing Magnetism. And she is a stellar student. It's not just student. She, she, you can see her work ethic and the way that she, uh, she approaches everything is with heart and the analytics. So what I call that is high achievement. And I haven't seen that. I've been doing this for 20 years. I haven't seen that many people that are like Olivia. Mm -hmm. So when Olivia puts together a product, I can't wait to find out about it. So of course, Olivia, tell us about what, what's been going on. I mean, we, um, at least tell them about your story about where you started the journey part of it. Sure. So, okay. yeah, um, when I when I met you, Kathy, um, you had told me about your course, and I had been in the corporate world for thirty years. And when I started, I was kind of thrown in because my husband's health was failing. Right. And I needed to get a job to support my family. And I had a strong business background. So I was thrown into this corporate setting that was very fear-based. And I was really traumatized by it. Yeah. And I had no confidence of my own, which, so everything that happened just triggered me. And I was, I was living in fear most of the time. So, and it was a very fear-based culture as well. And that kind of put me on a path of trying to understand two things. How could I strengthen my own self-confidence? And also, what is going on in companies? Because I could see how it just didn't really work that well for the corporation either. And I moved, I started out in a credit card bank, and I moved to a few different banks over a five-year period. And there was lots of mergers and acquisitions. And I just saw how everybody suffered. And I think for me... I would have loved, so I've put together this course called Love All of Yourself, which is part of my love at work method. Mm -hmm. And it's really a book that I wish I had 30 years ago. And so as a researcher, being in this position of having to show up and being afraid, I started thinking, how could I improve myself and, and learn to love myself more? And I'm also a spiritual seeker. So I was reading spiritual books and listening to talks. Yeah. And so I got some ideas that I actually, as a researcher, I tested them. And that's what I share in the, in this course. Well, you, you, the, I, I know you're going to be modest about this. So I'm going to keep being, um, <laughs> I'm going to keep saying it. When, when people have a champion spirit, when they are, um, they do not settle for the mediocre. Oh, good. Um, um, Priya is here. Priya hi. says, hello, love you, Olivia, you rock. Is that cool? Oh, hi, Priya. <laughs> so, what you see is that there's there are traits that super successful people have, highly functioning people have mm -hmm. self-love. And I, I can totally relate to Olivia's journey. I worked in, um, I had my own business and I lost it in a divorce. And then I had to go to work for other people until I could start this again. And one of the places I worked, I worked at IBM. I worked at, um, at uh, Arthur Anderson. And the level of performance anxiety, I guess, is the right word to use. I mean, it's just because you just really, it's like having your master's thesis due almost every day. Exactly. I mean, it's this like, it, and and you're self-driven anyway, but mm -hmm. but there's so many other variables that you have no control over yeah. that that the if you don't work on yourself, you are so out of balance because 
anything can knock you off center. So the the fact that you figured out a way to have this calm center and be highly functioning. I mean, you guys, Olivia is a um, internationally famous author with Wiley, which is one of the best uh, business publishing companies in the world. Um, she she's she's done amazing things. So, so and of course, you're not going to tell anybody that. So I have to. <laughs> <laughs> but but the thing is, you, when somebody that has figured it out, and you don't have to figure it out, and you can follow in their footsteps, and they'll actually hold your hand as you go through it, that's worth so much. Because um, if, if you're highly sensitive, you're the chaos in, it doesn't even matter what job you have, whether you're in corporate America, the chaos, we're in an election year, it's everywhere. Well, and some of the research I was doing around corporate culture, I realized from a reading and experience that, and my technology work is that the technology is creating such rapid change that everybody's affected. I mean, how quickly do our phones go out of mode and we need to replace them and so everybody's having to deal with constant change and that's where it becomes even more important that we are in our own authority and love ourselves and can, can be our own champion and surround ourselves with people that love and adore us rather than tear us down. And I always joke about how I've worked on myself and then I go and visit family to see how far I've come, <laughs> right? So I don't get triggered by anyone anymore. George Garland said that. I think oh, he really? was a person. Think, think, think you're all, you've got it all together. Go visit your family. <laughs> and all the triggers. Well, it's because most of the trauma that we've had is from uh, age zero to seven. Yeah. And so, especially if you're role playing in the family, then you fall back into that. Well, that they were that way because and then you you actually take on that character role right yeah and it's so fascinating i just saw greg Braden at the conscious life expo on oh, Monday. yeah, yeah i was with said, him a couple of weeks ago yeah so he reminded me something so when you were young do you remember hearing that your brain can't be changed after age five or seven right. or something like that right and then they learned about neuroplasticity. And that's what a lot of the course practices work on is we can actually remap our brain. And I'll tell you, when I just heard about it, I just, my left brain dismissed it immediately. I thought, this is stupid. This, this doesn't make any sense. But I was curious enough. And the man that taught this practice that I share was so confident. I thought, well, what do I have to lose? I can do it while I'm sleeping, you know, and I just started this practice and after a few weeks i realized that i was less reactive and i and then i really dove into well, what's in the subconscious mind and like you said a lot of our unconscious triggers or reactions are based on things that happen to us and we don't even remember i think it's like somewhere between 80 and 90 percent of our reactions are unconscious wounds right. or traumas that we're responding to. Well, so. and, and that could be also a lot of um, your soul mission, right? It, yeah. you, before you came in and you, in non-physical, you decided, oh yeah, I want to try this this time. <laughs> yeah, I want to try hating myself for most of my life. Right? <laughs> but, well, I, well, I just want you to know that uh, Zana is here and she says, oh, LOL, genius. And then uh, Priya says, support is vital. Joanne Palladino, who also has a lovely, um, lovely uh, class on self-love um, that's uh, very spiritual, beautiful. Um, she does light language and energy healing. Um, she says, yes, indeed, family, our first spiritual teachers. <laughs> yeah. um, and then Priya says, mindset is key and self-love. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So, so tell us how, so um, I also want to share that, that uh, Olivia was in a summit that I put on in January. We'll have another one in, in April and Olivia's um, um, 
that target market for that or that audience for that summit was for conscious parents and conscious grandparents. And so I want everyone to know that we can have this conversation with people in the corporate world, which of course, Olivia wants to help a lot of those people because she can see their pain. But I also see this a lot in conscious parents and grandparents. The, a lot of the parents are taking care of their parents and their children. Mm -hmm. And if they're conscious, they're making conscious choices as best they can, but they've got high stress, right? Yeah, absolutely. And this is stuff I think if we can, so like you say, my audience may be corporate people, but they have families and many of them have children. And, and I think in some cases we're healing our parents as well. And I feel like I was just starting to learn to love myself when my daughter was young. So she's got much more confidence than I do. And sometimes she'll be coaching me, you know, mom, you don't have to explain. And I love that because I feel like, okay, so she's got the skills I didn't have. She's going to make, it'll just be easier for her. And I'm so grateful for that. Well, I'm not sure that um, you were shy and you were in, you did, you actually are very, very good at math. So it's very left brained. But, but you also, have, obviously, you're highly sensitive. You may be um, one of the intuitives or empaths and didn't even know what to call it back then. So you were feeling everyone. You were feeling the field around you. And yeah. so, so you, the, what I'd like you to talk about a little bit more about how practical you can make things uh, Because your class and your offering is extremely easy to do if you choose it right? yeah it's i'm sorry there's a noise in my background you said easy to do is that what you said yeah, yeah. It, they really are there the, there's a lot of practices that take very little effort and sometimes they're just designed to feed your subconscious so you don't even have to really think about what you're doing while you're doing it or it's happening and you're doing other things. And then there's a few of the practices that actually reward you so that they get to be fun and then you just build them into your daily life. Oh, that's cool. I can so, share one if you'd like. It's, that's, it's, oh, that's it's, great. It's, it's in my five day challenge. So one of the things that I, I remember hearing Marianne Williamson say, if you don't feel good about yourself, go to a homeless shelter or a shelter for battered women and just play with children and be with these people and, and give them your time. And she said, you will be showered with so much love that you'll leave there feeling really good about yourself. And I thought, yeah, that's so true. If we give our, be generous to others or our spirit and our love, it'll come back to us. And I also feel like it tells the universe we want more of that. Right. So when I, I always do this when I'm in the grocery store. I look at the cashier and I try to think of something I like about what they're wearing or their hair or smile. And I'll just say, I love your outfit or I love your hair or I love your smile. And I try to put it in I messages rather than that's a nice dress or that's a nice shirt. Because if I say that's a nice dress or shirt, it puts me in the position of judge. Like I can tell you whether it's nice or not. So uh -huh. I think there's an unconscious message that I'm judging them. So I just try to make it about, I love it. And I just see people's faces light up and then, and then that makes me feel great. And I get, you know, just that return love from that person. So I just encourage everybody to try that. Well, um, it, so the, a lot of the processes that you do, there's seven modules, right? right. And um, so there, are there seven separate, processes or are there more than seven there's more than seven so okay. each <clears throat> yeah each module has a few practices and then there's uh, and they're all designed to use way after the course um yeah so there's there's probably going to be 30 all together or more wow wow that's great so even if one doesn't resonate you'll have plenty more to choose from that's right <laughs> And some of them are more powerful. Some of them are more logical. Others are more, we more, might resist them and just, or test them. You know, I encourage people 
to just try them out. That's what I had to do. It took me years to believe it and that they worked. Well, I mean, what I've known about your work is that it's so um, logically laid out that it's so usable. I mean, a lot of times you would have to read 10 books to get this information and instead it's all packaged and because you've created something that you know works, it's tried and true. Yeah. And it's in a in a usable fashion that can change you pretty quickly, right? Right. And I have it in a format that sort of follows the journey. So we, I need my left brain satisfied. So I start out talking about what is the value of loving ourselves, and what are all the pitfalls of not loving ourselves, and then we go into exploring our origins, and then looking at how we can master our own behaviors and reactions. And then how to be in a relationship with other people, some healing modalities that we can all use. And finally, <clears throat> excuse me, stepping into our purpose. Like what I feel we're all we're all <clears throat> here at this time because we have gifts we want to share. And right. to do that, we really need to be confident in who we are because we're gonna be attacked, perhaps, or we have to be vulnerable out there. And I I also think people need to feel our hearts in order to know if we're real. So that requires vulnerability, which I feel only comes when we are love ourselves in love with ourselves. <laughs> right. Right. Well, th this, um, this is one of those uh, gifts, rare gifts that you get where somebody made it really easy for you to do it. <laughs> I mean, th this is like, you know, how it, sometimes they'll, there'll be people that are saying, I want to lose 10 pounds, but it isn't that easy. Or I want, I want to work on myself. I'm going to get a coach or whatever. But this is a self-study, self-paced self uh, class, right? Yes. And we'll have live Zoom meetings so people can ask questions and connect and share how things are going. So it's kind of a mixture. Yeah. Uh -huh. a, a hybrid kind of. Right. So um, I'd love for people, so um, Priya said the subconscious mind is our connection to the infinite mind. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. an interesting way to look at it because I've always been trying to clear the um, stinking thinking in my subconscious mind. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's like a computer program to me and it's, and I may want to edit the programs. That's all. Yeah, I remember this one he healer. He said, think of it as a hard drive and you're just deleting everything and reformatting it with what you want to be there. And I feel like that's what I did. I was back in the early 90s. I couldn't even speak up at a meeting. I was so terrified. Really? And now I'm on camera. And this is would not have been possible without all these techniques that I <laughs> figured out and practiced it's true i mean i lived it books, you were on stage in big uh, conferences because you're a data expert at, right yes. right that was what threw me into this journey they said we want you to speak at a conference i was terrified and <laughs> <laughs> oh my god but that was how long ago was that that was about 25 years ago oh, okay so you so you've been working with these tools for that long? Yes. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So, yeah, I mean, I, I thought they were tried and true, but 25 years is a long time to, to sort out which ones are the best ones and share those. And, and I want to also say that they don't take that long. So one of the things is I think we're all, all of everything speeding up and these things can work much more quickly. And the other thing is they feel the most difficult right in the beginning, but then when you start to see results, I feel like I just got hungry for more and more and more. And yeah. so I, I started noticing a difference within a few weeks. And then, as I said, I think everything's faster now. So right. I think people could get where I am in a year or, or a day, perhaps, well, you know, it we're, we're matter. it's, it, you know, their soul's going to guide whoever, whoever sees this and gets it their soul's going to um, know that this is the fastest route for them. And mm -hmm. they'll, they'll do the best. I mean, you'll see. I mean, this is a kind of course you can do over and over and over again. Yeah. Right. It, it, and each time you'll get something different because 
you'll be at a different place. You won't be at the same level. You'll be at maybe here, and at first time you do it here, next time there. Yeah. So, and, and um, the, uh, the idea is to be in your joy where you can really be a creative being with the universe, right? Right, right. Yeah, we all deserve love and belonging. and We're all worthy of love and belonging. So could you share some other um, stories, uh, maybe another story about um, uh, what you've seen when you've done these these uh, processes or other people have done? Yeah, I've had the most interesting experience, especially in the business world, but even outside where people will say, you seem so calm or you seem to have this center. And I wasn't even aware of it, but I do know it was from doing a lot of this kind of work so that I could go within and be still and not respond and the there's a a couple practices that work on that um so one of the modules is about the five levels of self-mastery and there's a great poem i don't have access to it but it's called the uh, autobiography in five chapters if you want to look it up by portia oh. nelson and she it, it's really about how <clears throat> we might start out being a victim we don't know what's going on that is creating our world right we're just oblivious to our role in what's going wrong and then the next level is we start to see after the fact how we're creating what's happening yeah and then the next level is while we're doing it we're becoming aware of it so i thought I st i'm still at this stage in a lot of i mean i'm in all the stages we all are in different parts of our lives but this might really you might be able to relate to the fact that you're eating that cookie and you're saying, I can't believe I'm doing this. <laughs> or your words are coming, <clears throat> excuse me, words are coming out of your mouth <clears throat> to someone and your, your witness is thinking, oh gosh, I can't believe I'm saying this right now. <laughs> <laughs> so then as we step into mastery, we start to catch ourselves before we say it. And then finally, when we're really in our mastery, we're not even tempted anymore. And it's just a, a practice game. So I, like I said, I'm in all five areas at different points in my life. I think there's different venues where we're more triggered than others. The family is a great example again. So these are things that people, and I give people lots of techniques and practices and ways to assess where they're doing it, and how they can improve fine tuning their witness so that they can be masters in their own lives. So, so when um, I do have a couple of comments here that I can share um, and welcome everyone that's coming on. Um, uh, Terry, Terry uh, Willette says, um, love to all, which is thank you, Terry, for being here. And Zach said, I believe that fostering love in a corporate setting is worthy of the investment. I've aligned with the idea that everyone has something to offer and the idea of safe workplace for expression is obviously a challenge. Do you, how do you feel about the aspect that everyone is in their point in conscious growth and not everyone will be at a level where they are capable of immediately engaging others with due respect because of their triggers? Wow, that's just a great question. And it's true. I think, especially in the corporate setting, People get into all kinds of situations they wish they weren't in because they don't have that self-awareness. And it, there will always be all kinds of levels, even in the corporate setting. So I feel that it's important. And as especially in the corporate world, if you work there or people who work with people in the corporate world, with the speed of change, now everything really, we all have to think of ourselves as leaders. And the innovation is going to come from being vulnerable and being able to connect deeply, which really requires us to be in our mastery and love ourselves. So I hope that answers your question, please. Yes. And he wrote, the ability to move forward in love has everything to do with conscious growth. I work in the most demanding of environments, yet I thrive and love it. So oh. 
But but I think uh, this is the other part of it that I'd like everyone to know about it because what I see is this capability by doing this self-love work of having intense focus and being in the flow. It's it's so different than the other external um, access of data when you're when you're working with self-love and you're working inside. Um, you can that's why you're so you're so productive. That's why you are the way you are, is that you've worked on that alignment. There's not these incongruent thoughts going on. You're okay, I'm doing this now. <laughs> yeah, it's so funny. I know people probably heard of Brene Brown and yeah, she has said this as well, is that I will take in some kind of insight intuitively and then I'll prove it with data or practice, right? And yeah. so the, the two are absolutely coming together. And I feel like there's so much when we are able to go within, feel comfortable with our own inner guidance, which I think self-love allows that, mm -hmm. then we can get insights so much more quickly and we can test them. We're just, many times we can just learn to trust them and live in the world as if that's the truth. And much of what we think is what we create. Exactly. This is what we're all learning. So why not default to the best? I remember my son was upset. One of my sons was upset because somebody was looking at him and uh -huh. he thought they were saying, thinking something negatively. And I said, just, just imagine they're saying, what a cool guy walking by, right? Yeah. And, we, and we can catch ourselves and, just remap it. So I would tend to go negative and then I'd say, nope, that's the old me. And now here's what I want to think. It could feel very artificial, but after a while it would work. And then I would start to default to the more positive response. So yeah. these are all things we can do. That's perfect because it, you are with the inner world creates the outer and it, you're, everything is a reaction to something else. So if you're staying in love, appreciation, respect for others, I mean, it's hard if you're feeling that competition the, in corporate and in family sometime, there's a lot of competition. There is competition maybe for attention from your parents or just um, you got you got more praise and love for better grades. So everybody wanted to have better grades or what, yeah. whatever it is. So it, I find in corporate, it was different than in, in a lot of the small businesses. So a lot of the small businesses I've worked with um, there, a lot of them are like family yeah, <laughs> and, and so people nice. take roles like family. So clearing those triggers can help you in every aspect, right? Well, right, and so there's a couple of things. The, the, I feel like the divine feminine is really coming in strongly now. And so we can think of more around the lines of collaboration. If someone else is offering a self-love course, I would love to know what they're doing and maybe I'll refer people to them. And I'm hoping because my desire is for everyone to love themselves i feel like this planet will be so much happier and of course it's a lot lifelong process i'm still working on it right uh, and right. i feel that that's shifting so when a small company one of the things that often happens is if they want to grow then they reach a point where nothing works right to get to the next level and i think there's a new way to do that now that we don't have to become competitive in a us versus them sense, but right. maybe be, do our best, best ourselves, continue to improve and then see how we can all work together to make the world a better place. Well, it, the other part is this is, um, because we're in a constant change environment and, and, and it's speeding up, the, um, the one of the best ways for us to live is in innovation. And when you are in a very secure place about who you are, what your values are, what you prefer, then it's a great uh, jumping off point to go to innovation. Whereas if you're still in the, the aspect of, okay, where are we? <laughs> right. 
what are we doing? So that that's the other part is um, that, and the love is the glue, I think. I do too. I absolutely do. And it's funny because 30 years ago, nobody ever mentioned love in business. And now well, it's well, actually- That was, uh, you were afraid of a lawsuit if you- Yeah, did. right. <laughs> it was probably be considered inappropriate. Well, today it's used in advertising. You can see it with Southwest and Subaru. And um, my dear friend Steve Farber just published a book last fall called Love is Just Damn Good Business. Yeah. So I'm speaking at his conference at the end of the month and hoping to share more. Tell, tell us about your book. <clears throat> well, so a, year, a little bit over a year ago, I published Love at Work. And it's this... <clears throat> starts out with the argument and a lot of data proving companies who embrace a culture of love actually are more profitable. It's really phenomenal how much more profitable. And then I go into the love at work method. So love all of yourself is the first step in the love of uh, love all of, uh, love at work method, excuse me. And I feel like it's the most fundamental. So I'll be developing courses for the other three steps. There's uh, own your superpowers, which is like finding your gifts and then visualize your inspired purpose and engage with your tribe. So there'll be courses. It might be a combination or separate. I haven't figured that out yet, yeah. but these, uh, the, the, the whole acronym spells love. And it's really how a foundation of self love can allow you to step into your purpose. And how do you do that? And how do you connect with people? that are also doing that, or you can help them. And so it feels like a really good cooperative effort. Wonderful. And that, so you can see that this is um, a gift to all of us that, that Olivia has all of the experience and the techniques and the tools that are readily available through her work that can really help you have a happier life. I'm going to put the uh, website up again. It's loveallofyourself.com. And um, it's going to be on, um, it's, set, it's seven modules. Is that correct? Yes. Yeah. Seven modules. And it's going to be, it's available now. It will launch tomorrow. So if you oh, want to grab your yeah. sale price today, um, we, it's $4.97 normally, but we're offering it as a special for Valentine's week and Valentine's Yeah, well, this is one of those things that um, it's a gift that will keep on giving and it will affect everyone in your in your life. It's not just you. I, I mean, as women, we've been taught, you know, a lot of times self-love hasn't been um, hasn't been shared for us um, because we have tried not to be selfish or we've we've thought that working on ourselves because we're the nurturer for the family and we're a lot of times the glue for the family or the family unit. And so that, that's where this is, it's time now for everyone to have these tools mm -hmm. and give the gift of that yourself or to, for a Valentine's day gift, give a gift like this instead of some other material thing, my goodness. This is so important and, and you will, it will change everyone in your environment. Yeah. That's love is the one resource that's unlimited. The more you give, the more there is. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. And, and you can see that um, if you are um, looking to up your game as a, as a business owner or as someone who likes to write books, um, you need high focus. You need high, to be highly, um, uh, you have to create habits that make you cap capable of being highly successful and focused. And these tools will do that. It's not just self-love. It is you are able to zone in and really do what you came here to do because you're in that field. Yeah, thank you. Perfect. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else? 
So, so the best way to reach you, um, I put the website up. It's loveallofyourself.com. Um, you're also uh, on LinkedIn and on Facebook. And are you on YouTube also? Yeah, I am. Okay. I am. And is there any other way that they should, they can find you here on Facebook pretty easily? Yeah. I mean, if you want to contact me on Facebook, um, my email is olivia at oliviapr.com. And I'm happy to interact with you. If you're really interested in the course, you can sign up and we'll do a 20 minute coaching and a private coaching that uh, is offered for it too as well. This is a great opportunity, you guys. And you can see that um, Olivia is truly in service. There's not a lot of ego here. I'm having to pull her out. <laughs> uh, but uh, but I'm a big fan. I I really am, I can't wait to see all of the cool stuff that you create because this is you're coming from this incredible place, and I really appreciate it. Thank you. Oh, so thank I, you. <laughs> yeah. So with that, I think we'll sign off unless there's anything else you want to share, Olivia. You good? I'm good. Just uh, hope everyone has a wonderful Valentine's Day. Yeah. I'd love to see you in the course. And I love you. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, thank you. So everyone, um, I'll, I'll put all the links in the comments. And please, if this, if this program resonates with you, please share. Um, so that other people can take advantage <clears throat> and benefit from this amazing course and amazing work. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thanks. Thanks. Bye.